Hi all, this is a video response to the intriguing video about beating Kasparov in the Evans Gambit, an entertaining simultaneous display in which Kasparov was stumped by a little kid who had looked up on Alta Vista how to beat his Evans Gambit. So first of all, what is the Evans Gambit? After e4, e5 and white plays knight f3, black plays knight c6, white has two main choices here. Bishop b5 is the most often played move, which is called the Roy Lopez variation, named after a Spanish p priest called Roy Lopez, who I believe did a lot of theory um, about it. Bishop c4 is often used by juniors or people starting the game, and it could invite the Geico piano, which is black playing Bishop c5. Now, this Gokyo Piano it has been described as Old Stodge by Exeter Chess Club because if white continues, for example, with knight c3, then that can be very dull because there's no obvious pawn breaks and also the position can be very boringly symmetrical in this kind of thing. And that's why they, they kind of considered it stodgy and bad actually for the development of juniors, you know, who want to really improve their tactical skills. So this Evans Gambit is actually a very good way, I think, for juniors to improve their tactics because it's a gambit, it's an exciting gambit with b4 and it's not as crazy as it looks. It's been played for over a hundred years with great success and there's actually no clear refutation of this gambit. If anyone thinks there is, please let me know in the YouTube comments. After bishop takes b4, white's idea is to establish a rapid pawn centre with c3 and d4. So c3 was played here in this Kasparov-Anand game of 1995, and Anand retreated to e7. So Kasparov achieved that rapid pawn centre with d4. Now Anand kicked the knight off c4 by playing knight a5. So the bishop retreated back to e2. And now Anand played e takes d4. Now here it's a little bit intriguing that Kasparov didn't play c takes d4. I believe the reason is because black could play knight f6 and say e5 then I believe knight d5 might be playable or maybe even knight e4 for example knight e4 queen c2 d5 and black would have a perfectly solid position. And there isn't the peace pressure on the black position here, as there is with what Kasparov actually played against Anna, which was queen takes d4. So he doesn't mind the isolated pawns here, because he's targeting the g7 square in black's position. Anna played knight f6, and now e5 was played. The knight goes back to c6 here to attack the queen. But the queen, instead of retreating back, aims for the g3 square to probe the black king position. So after knight d5, queen g3, it's comfortably placed on g3, not only protecting e5, but also attacking black's king position, and maybe preparing a bishop h6 later if black casually castles. Anand played g6 though, and after castles, knight b6. So white has got quite a bit of compensation for this extra pawn. Black's king safety is threatened. There's this nice pawn wedge on e5. This looks to be a very playable gambit, perhaps as playable as the, as the Benko gambit, which I could cover in another video if, if there's interest in the Benko gambit. After c4, white not only maybe prepares bishop b2 for this reinforcement of, of the e5 square, but also c5 in some variations, and also the knight can now come to c3 and then to d5 which actually in the game I think happened. After d6, rook d1 though, pinning that pawn to the queen. But there's a lot of pressure on the black position here. Uh, and then played knight d7. Ribka seems to think black's best move, well at least at 9-10 ply, is knight a4, which might have a point to try and blockade the c-pawn, but it hardly looks like a very aggressive counter system to this gambit. Anyway, so knight d7 was played, and Kasparov played bishop h6, stopping the black king from castling. And then munched on e5 to be two pawns up now. But after knight e5, knight e5, the knight came aggressively to c3. So that c4 did vacate the c3 square. And now that knight can come maybe aggressively to d5 now.
After f6, c5 though, using that, using that c pawn as a battering ram against black's pawn structure in the centre. So Anand played knight f6, and after cd, cd, he played queen e3, protecting this bishop. And Anand munched that bishop, so we have the exchange of bishops, bishop f8. But after queen e3 check, king f7, white has still a lot of pressure for the two sacrificed pawns. So he's two pawns down, but he's got this very aggressive knight and bishop. His rooks are connected. Black's rooks are not connected. Black's king safety is still a bit insecure. So Kasparov plays knight d5. And black might be in trouble here. He played actually bishop e6. And after knight f4, there's incredible pressure on this diagonal as well, which needs to be considered. Black's stuck in the middle. And after queen e7, Kasparov played rook e1. And here, it looks as though black's position is collapsing due to the pressure and the king's safety. Anand actually resigns. But let's have a look at an example continuation. Queen d7. Bishop b5. Queen takes b5. Queen takes e6, check. And now rook a b1, and the rooks are invading black's position, e.g. queen f5, rook takes b7, check, king h6, queen e3, and the black king still getting harassed. Let's say g5, knight e6, rook c8. And now here, crushing perhaps would be, according to Ribka, knight d4. So queen g4. And white gains control perhaps of that f5 square. Or tries to try to get knight f5 check in. f3, queen f4, queen d3, now threatening knight f5 check. So this is a bad bishop compared to the good knight. Let's say g4. And now here, knight e6, huge, huge advantage according to Ribka. Let's see why. Instead of rook c1, Okay, let's have a look at rook c1. It just leaves the queen in pre, so that's no good. So say the queen, where does the queen move? All right, let's say it just moves over here. Queen f5, and black king has basically had it here. Bishop g7 you just take, so black's, the pressure's too much. So let's have a look in the final position again, and look in conclusions and summary at the game. So it was the, the Evans gamut, which has been used for over 100 years. So Anand played knight a5, and after ed, Kasparov played queen takes d4, putting a lot of pressure on black's king position, and also discouraging black from castling. And then after that, he used the c4 pawn to, to vacate c3, and also later as a battering ram on the d file. So the Evans gamut looks to be eminently playable as a result of this game in 1995. After rook e1, actually, Anand resigns. So let me know if you think there is a refutation of Salmon's Gambit, or what the best line is. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks very much. See you on YouTube.